From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 530 News. Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you so much for joining us on this Saturday. I'm Alina Howder. It's Montana's version of the Super Bowl. More than 26,000 packed at Washington Grizzly Stadium in Missoula this afternoon to cheer on the Cats and Grizz in the 122nd edition of Brawl of the Wild. But it wasn't just fans in the stadium cheering on the teams. Cat Grizz parties were held all across the state. Our Kelsey Boggs attended a very special one today in Coal Strip, where fans from both sides came together under one roof. Here at the Whiskey Gulch Saloon in Coal Strip, it doesn't matter if you're a Cats fan or rooting on the Grizz. Everyone is welcome to watch the 122nd annual Brawl of the Wild, and the rivalry between fans is as strong as ever. It can be intense, a lot of fun. The rivalry between Montana State and University of Montana dates back more than a century. I think it's like one of the top five oldest right. rivalries yep. in the U.S. for college football. Across Montana, fans show up and show off for their teams. What are you looking forward to the most? The win. The win. <laughs> the Cats and Grizz faced off on the gridiron Saturday for the 122nd Brawl of the Wild. Out in Coal Strip, a special watch party organized by UM alum, open to fans from both teams. We're going to do drawings, 50-50, prizes, lots of cowbell, <laughs> lots of pom-poms. A lot of trash talk goes at the stadium, but there'll be a lot of trash talk in here today. Yeah. The Whiskey Gulch Saloon recently reopened and was excited to host the party. I love both. I love Montana in general, so <laughs> go Cats, go Grizz. It was a room divided as fans closely watched the game. Montana! Showing support for friends, family, and strangers on the team. My wife, she went to school there. Uh, her stepdad played football for the Grizz. My yeah. daughter goes there. She's a freshman this year. Look up the road to Melstone. We got our starting defensive end, Brody Greeby. Melstone, Montana. Who would have thought? Regardless of the final score, fans were excited to come together as a community. Fun, food, you know, all the stuff Americans love. But still poked fun at one another. Go Grizz! Go Cubs! I'm looking forward to a Grizz win. All in good spirits, celebrating Montana's teams. In Coal Strip, Kelsey Boggs, MTN News. There are a lot of Cats fans who don't like the Grizzlies, but one man from Big Sky has a very valid reason for never wanting to see a Grizz again. Rudy Norlander was attacked by a Grizzly in early September. The Navy vet had his jaw torn off by the bear and spent five months in a Utah hospital, but today marked a big milestone in his recovery. Norlander is a Bobcat season ticket holder and set a goal of making it to the Cat Grizz game in Missoula to cheer on the Bobcats. And he was in fifth row of the stadium for this afternoon's afternoon's big game. It is exciting. My buddy that's here with me bought stadium tickets for all the home games at MSU, and I missed the first two months. So this is the last hurrah. My daughter got me tickets for the day. Yep. Norlander underwent complete jaw reconstruction, among other injuries. Naturally, he said the experience made him like the Montana Grizzlies even less, and he looks forward to watching the Cats play in the playoffs. As for the game itself, the stakes have perhaps never been higher. The Grizz came in today's game ranked third in the nation, with the Bobcats just behind at number four, both teams fighting for a chance to win the Big Sky Conference. MTM's Tom Wiley has the highlights from what turned out to be a runaway game for the Grizz. In 122 meetings between Montana and Montana State, they've never entered the Brawl of the Wild as top five opponents, but that all changes on Saturday, and the stakes could not be higher. An outright Big Sky Championship, potential top two seed in the FCS playoffs, not to mention bragging rights and the Great Divide Trophy. Needless to say, both teams and fan bases fired the heck up for this one. Grizzlies carried that into the first drive. 14 methodical plays capped off by Eli Gilman with a four-yard touchdown, and Montana draws first blood. After a Bobcat three and out, the Grizzlies driving again. Clifton McDowell rolling out, hits Junior Bergen in stride. 38 yards deep into Bobcat territory, and McDowell adds the exclamation points and then flexes on him. Two drives, two touchdowns, 14 to nothing. MSU finally finding a way to move the ball with Tommy Malott. 
breaks loose in the pride of Butte America, rumbles 46 yards to the Montana 14. Cats are in business with the Grizz defense feasted all afternoon. Third and long, the pitch to Julius Davis. Riley Wilson brings him down in the backfield, led to a missed field goal for the Bobcats. Two more Grizz field goals later, and Montana heads to the locker room with a 20 to nothing lead. The Cats are shell shocked, but they find life on their first drive of the second half. Malott completes his first pass of the game. It's a 19 yard touchdown to Ty McCullough, just what Montana State needed, but the celebration was short lived. McDowell to Bergen. The Billing Senior product makes one man miss, and he puts Montana back up by 20. And they were clicking in all phases. Malott looking over the middle, but he's picked off by Trevin Gradney, and the Montana Grizzlies will lock up the outright Big Sky Championship, a top two seed in the FCS playoffs, and most importantly, reclaim the Great Divide Trophy. 37 to 7, the final over their bitter rivals from the Brawl of the Wild in Missoula. Tom Wiley, MTN Sports. A lot of smiling faces in Missoula after the Cat Grizz game today, and that despite all the low clouds and fog that we couldn't quite shake in the sky. They lifted a little bit, but it was still a gray sky over Missoula and over Washington Grizzly Stadium. But the game was quite interesting, and the temperatures here in Billings above average yet again. We had gradually increasing clouds throughout the afternoon hours, still above average highs. Today started the day at 33 degrees, had a high of 56. That was 11 degrees warmer than average. And taking a live view on our Stockman Bank camera, you can see the clouds are starting to push into the sky. Temperatures cooling a little bit right down, down to 53 degrees, but no wind. We have a storm coming. Our your forecast coming up. Billings police responded to yet another shooting Saturday, this time in the 2000 block of Canyon Drive, just a few blocks from the par three golf course. Officers say a man was shot in his right leg after the victim claims the suspect stole his cell phone and then took off in a dark colored vehicle. Police are still looking for the suspect, but say tracking him down has been difficult because the victim has not been very cooperative with officers. Billings has now seen seven shootings in just the past two weeks, and that's one reason a group of residents gathered in South Park today for a prayer march against gun violence. Organizers from Road to Damascus Ministries, which organized the event, called it a Jericho March, as a group of over 50 people walked down South 28th Street from South Park, stopping at the corner of 2nd Avenue South to gather in prayer. Community members who weren't part of the group tagged along as they marched down 2nd before sharing another prayer, and then they made their way back down 31st, back to South Park. I just want to pray over the South Side, um, just with all the violence lately. It's, um, it's unnerving and it's scary, you know, and we have children and old people and we just want to pray for peace because people are dying down here. We need to continue in this neighborhood because it's all of us here. Our kids go to school here. We go to work here. We, you know, softball fields are here. The, the playgrounds here. This is a safe place and it doesn't feel that way lately and that's what we're coming against. Katie and Josh hope this march is just the beginning of much needed change when it comes to gun violence and billings. Still to come on the MTN 530 News here on Q2, one Billings organization is making sure our community's veterans get a Thanksgiving meal. Find out more about Warrior Wishes next. The MTN 530 News continues right after this. Download. From Montana's news leader, you're watching the MTN 530 News. Thanksgiving is right around the corner, a day to celebrate with friends, family, and of course, food. But that's not an option for many vets in our community. It's why one organization is making sure our veterans in need have a full Thanksgiving meal. Our new MTN reporter, Marcus Kakova, has the story. On Tuesday, the Albertsons here in the Heights will be host to Warrior Wishes as they hold their annual Vets Giving event where this year they'll be feeding up to 800 local veterans by providing them with Thanksgiving meals. The founder, Miguel Gonzalez, shared with me how he's gone from serving abroad in the armed forces to serving local veteran communities right here in Montana as he prepares to hand over the reins to his organization to the next generation of veterans. I've lost several friends to, to veteran suicide. It's something that I will never forget because I can't forget. I can remember being in the Army and 
going to one of the fellow soldiers, one of my fellow soldiers' houses that was married, so we had a place to go instead of a chow hall. We were gonna be bombed, so rather than take the risk of going to the defect, I stayed, and the only thing I had available to me at the time was a sleeve of crackers and a bottled water, and that's what I had for Thanksgiving in 2007. Thanksgiving is an event that the founders started uh, the first year of our uh, organization. And that's where we get together and give meals to veterans in need right before Thanksgiving. I think we as, as other veterans need to help the younger veterans. That's our position and that's what we did in the military is we took care of each other. I've lost relationships, I've lost jobs. I've had issues throughout that 20 years that I could have alleviated if I'd have just reached out and said, I need help. Nobody on staff, and I included myself, make any money at this. We're all on a volunteer basis, and that's the best way to do it, because there's nothing stronger than the heart of a volunteer. Honestly, it's like his last two raw. You know, he's going to step down and actually kind of relax a little bit and enjoy some life. Proud of him. Proud of him. But I want veterans to know that they're not alone. They made sure of that, and, and that was probably another reason for being able to say, look, take a step back, reevaluate the situation, and then attack it. And this is how I chose to do it, was to start a, and formulate an organization that would help them. The help is there, and they should reach out and, and, and get what they've earned. A council through Little Bighorn College that promotes Crow culture met today at the MSUB Native American Achievement Center to teach the traditional art of moccasin making. The purpose was to educate the Crow tribal youth leadership of Little Bighorn College's extension service program. About a dozen students learned how to measure their feet and make patterns to design their own moccasins made from buckskin. For many, this was their first experience learning how to bead. The group hopes that once the youth members learn how to make their own, they can then teach others and keep the traditions alive. Many of the participants, like Vanessa Afraid of Bear, watch their own grandparents make moccasins. I'm almost making my ancestors proud because like this is obviously something they did and like for me to be in a society that we are but still able to return and do that, I think it's really significant to me to know how to do it for myself and then generations to come. Well, it starts right with their, their feet. You know, they're learning how to make these moccasins and get on that cultural path. And we we're, we talk to them in our language, we speak Crow to them, and we want them to learn leadership. And we want them to um, continue on in life knowing who they are and not forgetting where they come from. In order for them to start learning and having awareness of who they are and where they come from, they need to walk in the shoes of their ancestors. You know, they were pretty tough people back then, and they used moccasins to get anywhere. Moccasin making is just one of several activities they hope to share with the younger generation. The group is planning on wearing their moccasins in the spring for powwows. The MTN 530 News continues right after this.